these are these are research objectives. Uh, so besides examining uh, interactive effects between these three management strategies and developing an economic model that will inform farmers about return on investment, we also want to develop a model to predict grain yield based on timing and density of IDC uh, with the use of drone imagery. So to accomplish the goals of our study, we planted our experiment in three different locations in western Minnesota, Oxon, Graceville, and Denver's. Oxon and Graceville were uh, planted on May 10th, and then Denver's was planted on May 11th. Uh, to vary the intensity of IDC, we, we, uh, plots were placed in two areas within each producer field, a hotspot area and a neutral spot area. Our hotspot area was an area with uh, I, where IDC is more severe, where there is lots of pressure of IDC, and our neutral spot area was a more representative area of the whole field where some IDC can be found, but it's not as severe as in a hotspot area. So our experimental design was a randomized complete block with split blood treatment design and four applications. And so in total, we had 24 treatments, which represent the combination of all four main factors and their levels. So we tested uh, three levels of iron gallates, zero, two, and four pounds of soybean per acre, two varieties, a moderately tolerant variety and a tolerant variety. Later you will see, I mentioned uh, the tolerant variety as susceptible variety, but that's just for easier interpretation or visualization. We tested two populations, uh, uh, 125 and 175,000 plants per acre and also two rates of nitrogen, non-nitrogen, and a pound of urea per plot. We apply nitrogen just to increase the intensity of IDC, since nitrate in the soil is known to uh, promote IDC symptoms in soil. Uh, after emergence, uh, plots were evaluated weekly uh, for an IDC severity in a 1 to 5 visual rating system, which we call greenness score, green scores. Uh, as well as ground based and DBI, which is an equipment that we run in the field called uh, Crop Circle, and also high resolution drone imagery. After harvest, the weight of each sample was converted to yield on a 13% moisture basis. I put this slide together just to show a contrast uh, between three versus four management strategies. These plots, they were placed right next to each other in a hotspot area. As you can see, even in a hotspot area, we can still have soybeans that look great. If uh, the right management strategies are adopted, we can still have higher yields. This plot at the bottom here produces almost nine, 90 bushels per acre, if, if we would convert per acre. The plots at the top, the one on the right, around 12 bushels per acre. The one on the left, almost zero. So this is why our uh, research project is important, because it will allow us to provide farmers with more refined recommendations for managing IDC. There are strategies that can be adopted that will help us achieving higher yields in the most heavily affected areas. So some of our preliminary results at Denver's uh, four-way interaction between type a soybean variety and population was found. So in our, our neutral spot, we didn't find any statistical differences. Uh, as you can see in the graph, the average yield for all treatments was, were very similar. And we didn't see many uh, differences in IBC symptoms represented by the green and yellow uh, boxes uh, as well. Differently, in our hotspot area, we found three main things. First, without soy green being applied, higher seeding rate significantly increased the yield of the tolerant variety. So we got to see this, we, got, we, we have to look at these results from a farmer's standpoint, right? So if the farmer uh, is, is not willing to apply soy green because maybe soy green has become too expensive, maybe he can plant a tolerant variety and increase seeding rates. He should definitely uh, get higher yields. Secondly, we found that in the susceptible variety, uh, 
increasing the, the rate of cycling from zero to four pounds significantly, significantly increased yield, but only in higher CD rates. It's important to point out, as you can see, we didn't find statistical differences between zero and two pounds of soy green, but there is a, there's quite a big difference there uh, from 44 to 64 bushels on average. If you only consider average yield, that's a big difference. So applying soy green significantly can help us in the field. So from 125 to 175, thousand plants per acre. Yep. And third, we found that incre at increased seeding rates and without soy green application, the tolerant variety produced 52% more than the susceptible variety. Again, looking from a farmer's standpoint, if the farmer decides that uh, it's not willing to apply soy green because soy green is too expensive uh, and he's willing to plant higher seeding rates, Plenty and tolerant variety should should be considered because he should have or she should have higher yields. At Graceful, we found another four-way interaction between, but at, at this time between type, soy green variety, and nitrogen. Uh, at our neutral spot, we found that application of soy green uh, increased soy green yield by 54 to 60 percent in the susceptible variety. Uh, where IDC was amplified by nitrogen. Again, the farmer won't just apply nitrogen in the field, go to the field and apply urea in the plot. But, we, but in this case, we apply nitrogen thinking that there could be some carryover, uh, some nitrogen carryover from the previous crop. We know that this was a very dry year. Some farmers applied, applied uh, urea in the corn. Maybe there could be some carryover for the next uh, soybean uh, season. Uh, so that's why the difference. So even though in a neutral area where IBC is not as severe, if there is nitrogen carryover from the previous crop, the farmer could expect uh, lower yields if not applying soy green and planting a susceptible variety. At our hotspot, we found that the, regardless of the variety, soy green application increased yield when nitrogen was applied. Again, if there is nitrogen carryover from the previous crop, the farmer, uh, independently of the variety, if it's a susceptible variety or a tolerant variety, in a hotspot area, the farmer can expect yield reductions if not applying soy green. Okay. And uh, in addition, we also found that where nitrogen was not applied and no soy green was added, the tolerant variety out yielded the susceptible variety by 72%. Again, Seeing this from a farmer's standpoint, if he decides, uh, if even though there is no nitrogen carryover from the previous crop, but it's a hotspot area, he, the farmer should definitely consider applying soy green because otherwise he can expect yield reductions, insignificant yield reductions. At Foxon, we found two. Uh, two uh, three-way interactions. The first one was between population, variety, and nitrogen. In this case, we found that at low seeding rates and without nitrogen application, the tolerant variety out yielded the susceptible variety by 22%. We also found that the tolerant variety produced significantly more than the susceptible variety with increased seeding rates where uh, nitrogen was applied. And in our second three-way interaction was between type, variety, and nitrogen. When I mention type, uh, type represents both uh, areas in which plots were planted, right? Uh, hot, the hotspot area and the neutral spot area. In this case, we found that the tolerant variety produced 28% more than the susceptible variety at the hotspot when nitrogen was not applied. So even though there is no nitrate carried over from the previous crop, in a hotspot area, a tolerant variety should be considered because it will definitely increase yields. We also found that nitrogen application decreased the yield of the susceptible variety in 25%. Again, seeing this from a farmer's standpoint, the farmer has two areas. One he planted corn this past growing season, the other one was not corn. In the corn, he applied urea. There's nitrogen carryover from, from this corn 
to the next uh, soil crop uh, in the field. Um, if he decides to plant a susceptible variety, he could expect new reductions in those areas where there is nitrate carryover. So preliminary conclusions. Uh, so preliminary results suggest different management strategies to be recommended uh, depending on the location and also the intensity of IPC. Uh, in neutral spots, as we saw in the results, uh, where lower intensities of IDC are found, uh, treatments uh, had a lower effect on grain yield or soybean yield. But differently, in hotspot areas where IDC is severe, treatments vary in their effect on grain yield. So we saw that there are many ways that we can manage IDC, right? I mentioned we can increase uh, seeding rates, we can apply soy green or uh, plant a tolerant variety. But each of these strategies come at some cost, right? Which one provides the best return of investment? I still don't have the answer for this question, but this is what we'll be doing next. Relating input costs and grain, and grain prices into our analysis will enable us to provide recommendations based on what really matters at the end, profitability, net income. As I mentioned before, uh, another goal of our study is to develop a model to predict grain yield uh, based on timing and intensity of IDC with the use of drone imagery and also use these drone imagery to predict IDC severity in the field. So this is something I've been working on uh, and I just want to show you some of our preliminary results as well. Uh, so we were able to develop uh, in a machine learning algorithm that can predict IDC severity in, our one, in a 1 to 5 visual rating system that uh, with almost 70% overall accuracy, which is quite good. So we can just fly the drone, get the images, run it through some softwares, and we get the IDC scores uh, on our hands with 70% accuracy. So let's say uh, the random forest or the algorithm uh, predicts 10, uh, 10 plots, 7 will be uh, correct. Right? Uh, in addition, we also found that among many different vegetation indexes that were tested, NDVI was the best, that, uh, was the one that best correlated with uh, grain yield. Uh, and this result means that we can use NDVI to predict grain yield uh, in soybean plots more or less affected by IDC. So to conclude, I would like to thank the Minnesota Soybean Research and Promotion, uh, Promotion Council for funding this project. Uh, and also the University of Minnesota and the Department of Agronomy and Genetics uh, for the opportunity of being part of this great graduate program. And also a special thanks to the NAVE Lab crew for their collaboration on many aspects of this project.